Okay, let's try this again. What I'm going to demonstrate right now is a failover, an automated failover of an Isilon share using Microsoft DFS and Superna Eyeglass. What we're looking at right now is an Isilon cluster, physical cluster made up of four S210 nodes. And over here we have a, a virtual cluster made up of three virtual nodes. Over here we have the eyeglass appliance and this is a virtual machine that was deployed using an OVF template. So the only pre-configuration that was done and isn't necessarily required um, were some access zones were created. AZ01 over on the source cluster and that same access zone with the same path was created on the target cluster. And this is just for the purposes of isolating the demo. Um, an interesting note here is the path that was used does not need to be identical. You could have a, a different directory structure on the target side, but for simplicity's sake, I kept them identical. Um, so the configuration starts with creating an SMB share, um, and we'll go into the access zone that we created for this, and we'll go through the SMB share creation dialog. We'll call it share01. Um, We'll put it right at the root of the path. We'll select the option to create the directory that doesn't exist. And we'll make sure that we don't have to deal with any permission issues. So the share is now created. And the next step is to actually create a sync IQ policy. So this is standard Isilon administration. We'll get into what Superna actually takes care of in addition to just having sync IQ send the data over. So I'll go through the create policy dialog and I'll put a policy name in here. And if you notice, this name is actually not an arbitrary name. Uh, it's required if you are using the eyeglass trial key. Um, it's a method that ensures that you're not actually going to use it in production. You have to abide by this policy name convention. So we will replicate the whole of the access zone and we'll use an IP address for the target cluster for simplicity's sake and we'll replicate to the same path on the target side. So we'll go ahead and create policy there and as soon as we create the policy it's usually a good idea to start the job make sure that the policy has valid paths in it, um, make sure that you actually have a good run of it. So it's running right here and we'll go back over to policies and it's still running because we don't see a last known good. But something to note here while it is running um, is that uh, we are going to the same path here uh, on the target side and we didn't actually create another share on the target side. And the reason for that is because that is something that iGlass will take care of. Um, so come, going back to summary, uh, it is still running even though there's not a whole lot of data in there. Look back. And should be finished any second now. And there it is. We have a last known good state of 4.09 p.m. That tells us we had a, a successful run. And now we can go over to iGlass and see if that policy has been inventoried. So we're going to go to the Jobs tab here. Um, and we can go back to Running Jobs. And as you can see here, there's a configuration replication job that's running. And this is an automated job that runs every five minutes, as you can see from the history here. And what it does, it goes out and queries the Isilon clusters that are part of the Superna inventory and looks for new jobs that have been created, new jobs being Sync IQ policies. So let's see if that one got caught in time. It did. Um, so now what we need to do is actually enable this job. Um, but before we do that, we're going to go into the DFS management pane over here and we're going to create a namespace. Um, so I'm going to use one of my servers that's in the domain and I'm just going to call it namespace1 and again I'm going to 
really not deal with any permission issues during this demo. I'm going to keep the defaults and I'm going to create the namespace. Once that's created, what I'll do is I'll go in and actually create a share within the namespace. So I'm going to go to New Folder and I'm going to choose the same share name that I had for my Isilon cluster. But when I go down to Add, what I'm doing is actually adding a target folder which exists on the Isilon. So the idea is that I have a DFS share that's backed by multiple Isilon shares, one being on one cluster and one being on another, and I can fail from that one cluster over to the other. So um, here's where I need to use a Smart Connect zone name, which is eg.demo.p1technologies.com and the share name. So I do have the ability to create a different share name here within DFS um, and use the share name that I created on the Isilon, but it's kind of easier to follow if you just use identical share names. So this is going to go out and take a look at the share. It found the share. So it just brings me back to this window where I can click OK. And now I have a share that's actually backing my DFS share. And if I go out as a client and I browse to the root of the domain, I see my namespace and I see my share here. And it's always good to just make sure that we can do some I.O. Um, we can create a document, put a little data in there, and close it out. Now one other thing to notice here is if you go to Properties and select the DFS tab, uh, you'll see the, the folders that back this share. And right now, there's only one there, and it is active. So we're going to cancel out of this. We're going to go back to our eyeglass appliance, and we're actually going to enable this job. And in addition to that, we're going to enable it for Microsoft DFS. Um, you get a warning here that tells you that shares will be renamed on the target cluster, and that's part of what I was referring to earlier, where um, shares are actually created for you by iGlass. Um, so going back to our running jobs, um, we're actually about a minute away from the poll, but we can force a poll by actually selecting Run Now. Uh, and that initiated this running job. As you can see, it kicked off at 4.14. Um, we didn't have to actually wait the extra minute. So now that this job is kicking off, um, the idea is that this will take it from a pending state and bring it into an OK state. It's going to actually go out and conduct an inventory and make sure that everything is set up properly on the cluster for this to actually uh, fail over. So it's going to make sure that the paths exist on the target side and that we have a valid failover job. So while we're waiting for that to complete, we can go back into DFS, um, and in the same management pane, uh, we can actually add a target folder to the same share. So this time I'm going to choose a different Smart Connect zone name, which is target-eg.demo.p1technologies.com, and it's share01 as well. Um, and this is basically adding my target cluster, my DR cluster, to the share. So I'm going to click OK there, uh, and it actually goes out to the cluster and confirms that, yes, that Smart Connect Zone name does exist, that DNS entry um, is reachable, um, but there's not a share there. So it's going to ask me if I want to create it. I'm going to say no here because that is something I'm going to leave to iGlass. And then it's going to ask me if I want to create a replication group. What this is referring to is actually DFS replication, which we're not going to use in this instance. We're using native Isilon replication in the form of Sync IQ. There are a variety of reasons why that's advantageous uh, over DFS replication. Um, but I won't go into those now, and we'll just say, no, we don't want to create a replication group. Um, so now, from a client perspective, let's see how things look. Uh, I'm going to go into demo, uh, the root of the domain. I'm going to go into the namespace. I'm going to go back into share. And after making a change, always a good idea to test I.O. again. Things look good. Um, hello again. Put a little bit of data in there and everything looks fine. Now let's take a look at the same 
properties interface and let's look at the DFS tab. We don't see our share there. The best thing to do is clear the history, select OK, and then come back in. Um, and now we see what we're looking for, which is basically an active passive setup behind this DFS share. So we have the active share uh, on the source cluster, the physical cluster that we started off with. And then we have a passive share, one that's not active right now, but one that is eligible to back this DFS share in the event that the other goes inactive. So um, that's essentially what's backing the share. Um, and you'll see when we do a failover how these two shares will switch roles from active to passive. So I'm going to click OK there. I'm going to close that out. And then I'm going to come back to Saperna. And I see that my job that was initiated at 414 is now complete. And my eyeglass job, uh, or my eyeglass sync IQ policy, is now in an OK state. So I'm in a situation where I actually can conduct a failover of this. So that's what we'll do. Um, it's actually going to be a controlled failover. Uh, it doesn't have to be a controlled failover. If you lost the Isolon cluster entirely, you couldn't conduct a controlled failover, but you still would have the ability to fail the share over using this wizard. So I'm going to choose Microsoft DFS. I'm going to choose my source cluster, which is my physical S nodes. Uh, I'm going to select next. This is the job that um, is out there for me to execute. Um, it validates the job. And then it gives you a little warning message that basically says, um, you know, take seriously what you're about to do here. You're about to flip read write on what's currently a read only sync IQ target. Um, so I select that box. I'm taking it seriously. And then I'm going to run DFS failover. And this is uh, basically, it's similar to the job uh, window that we were looking at previously. Um, it's the, the process of the DFS failover. Um, it basically will indicate each step of the process uh, and where you're at in that process. Um, you can also click on this logs link here uh, and you can see some detail as to what's happening on the cluster. Um, so right now it's waiting for it's gonna it's going to run the failover job or a sync IQ job again to get a final sync as it is a controlled job. Um, it's waiting for that to complete. And one thing about this log file, it, it's not tailing the log, so you won't see data actively populated in this log. Um, the best way to refresh it is just to close it out and then come back in. Um, and as you can see, this is the step it's in right now. So it's running the configuration replication. Um, as this is failing over, uh, we still have the ability to read right into this share. It's not until um, the actual uh, switch gets flipped where that gets shut down. So there, there will be a period of time where this does go um, uh, this does, does go dark on you and you are not able to write uh, for any period of time. The, typically reads, uh, depending on the application that you're using, um, may keep, continue to go through because they're cached on the client side. Um, but for the most part, you will uh, experience a point in time during failover where you have uh, write failure. Um, we're just not at that point in the failure. So um, as you can see, I can continue to create folders. Um, and as you can see, I'm still on the source cluster. So coming back to uh, the share, or the job, I should say, um, still in process. And what we'll do here is probably pause the video so we can wait for this to complete. Um, while we do wait, however, if you want to watch the longer version of the video, I can go into a step that was actually skipped when I was explaining the entirety of the process. Um, one of the things that we had to do was go out and add the cluster, cluster to eyeglass. Um, and in order to do that, uh, we basically um, went into this eyeglass main menu in added a managed device. Uh, and as you can see, it, it basically goes through using Isolon's platform API and creates a tree um, that inventories the entire cluster. So um, it's pretty interesting uh, a way to inventory the cluster and kind of organize the information about the cluster. 
Um, you can actually take it a step further with cluster reports and um, these were run in the past at some point but they give you um, a lot of pretty valuable information about your cluster um, directly from the platform API so you see things like cluster overview, um, the pools that are in the, the cluster, um, how they're laid out, the IP address ranges that are assigned to those pools, things of that nature. So um, good way to kind of understand what the platform API is capable of and, and what its output looks like. Um, still running right now and still, well let's see. So now we're at the point where um, we're actually allowing writes on the target side. So this is, uh, or that actually has been completed. So um, this is the point where the eyeglass software is actually doing what's called a resync prep. Uh, and what that is, is essentially creating a mirror policy that will allow you to fail back from the target cluster once that target cluster becomes active, you know, it's receiving the read writes. Um, so it, it's an important point because I think it really shows um, a lot of the value of what eyeglass does. Um, and I didn't really talk about that at, at the top and I'll go into that a little bit now. It's basically um, when you use sync IQ with two clusters and you're trying to protect data, uh, it's very good for getting the data from point A to point B from my production to my DR cluster. Um, but there are several things that are left out of that. And, and some of those things include um, shares themselves, so you can put all the data that the shares front uh, in that DR cluster, but the shares themselves don't get failed over or aren't really part of the sync IQ policy. It doesn't pick up that config that cluster configuration information. Um, another thing that gets left out from sync IQ are quotas. So if you've enforced quotas on the source or on the production site, when you conduct a failover and you're running off the, the DR site, those quotas aren't going to be there unless you manually go in and create them. Um, and this is the third thing, the sync prep, um, which is basically create that um, resync job back from the target cluster to the source. So after I do go live on my DR in my DR environment, I have the ability to continue to protect the data um, once that source cluster is back up for whatever reason. You know, if you had a, a, a hardware failure, you know, that may take some time to actually uh, have that job run and be in place. But um, in the case of a controlled failover, um, that's a situation where you can run it uh, immediately. So uh, as you can see here, the jobs have completed. And if we go back in to our client, uh, I'm not even going to refresh or do anything of that nature. And I'm just going to create another text document and show that I can read right into that document. Hello again and again. So let's take a look at what happened there. Um, this is really where the rubber meets the road. Um, and the beauty here is that I'm running off of a, a different cluster entirely. So um, I haven't uh, disrupted the client in any way. I haven't had to go out to the client to remap or reconnect or reboot or anything of that nature, which is really valuable when you have hundreds or even thousands of clients out there. Um, that's all taken care of within DFS. Uh, and basically, now that I have an active target that's read-write, I have the ability to do everything that I was doing on the source cluster. So that's essentially it. Um, not much more to see here. Pretty straightforward. Um, thanks for watching, and...